Okay, let's start on the Mud Flood book review. Couple ground rules. One, as said in the introductory video, I'm gonna try to avoid making fun of the guy's bad English. He has a lot of bad English. Two, I'm going to be going over large swaths of pages at the same time. I'm going to skip sections because a lot of this book is redundant. And I'm not going to try to analyze every single point. Instead, I'm going to be giving overarching thoughts on the arguments presented. And three, he uses the phrase many modern researchers or some variant of that all the time and never says the fucking modern researchers. So I'm going to take that sentence and throw it right the fuck out because it's meaningless. There are no modern researchers that take this shit seriously. If there were, he'd present them. When you dig into this book, you find, lucky for us, that the crux of the argument is actually presented at the bottom third of the first page of the book. There are many reports from all over the world that people have found buildings with windows or doors underground. Cool. That's the main argument, and he proceeds to give lots of examples of old buildings with windows at street level or below. Here you go, lots of them. But you can't just have random pictures of buildings with windows at street level and build a conspiracy, right? You need to go someplace deeper. Every once in a while, you gotta go through a lot of fucking pages to find something that you can actually bite into. Every once in a while, the author provides us with something. Here we go. Researchers found thousands of similar building cities all around the world. In Europe, Australia, India, Japan, Americas, and Africa. True. Lots of buildings are just constructed this way. Many older buildings all over the world seem to be buried, underground, or half buried. What the hell is going on? What the hell is wrong with you people? I... You also run into random gems in this book, like this page here a supposed evidence of photo modification somehow because the top half is blue this arrow is pointing to the modification i don't get it this is somehow related to the polytechnic museum in moscow i couldn't find this building is this building a part of the polytechnic museum is this a, a building a picture that the polytechnic museum modified or altered in somehow the fuck did they alter what the hell's going on like there's nothing here there's no evidence of anything but somehow this is cause to believe that history is a lie can you explain it to me i don't fucking get it and of course it's a fucking picture of his screen and everything's so blurry you can't figure out where the picture was taken there's it's such a pointless fucking book. I'm trying to get that across here. Even with the complete lack of substance, it's still been the entry level conspiracy theory so far. But let's go to the bottom of this page and read under the next page to see it get juicy. Researchers now investigating as to what might have happened. Some researchers are thinking the reason why these buildings are buried underground is maybe because of a flood, or a mud flood type of, of event. Cool, cool. I don't mind that. Wait, wait, wait for it. Wait for it. But they are not sure yet. Or maybe a global war happened a few centuries ago, and advanced weapons were used that buried these buildings. Some researchers are even asking if an alien force from outside our world attacked the world, which led to burial of many cities and buildings. Yes! Good. Got it. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> oh, now I'm sad. Is it super weapons? Is it aliens? What caused that building in New York to have a window at street level? Obviously, it's got to be aliens, right? Or super weapons. There's no other possibilities. Aren't those all the same thing? So the author does try to acknowledge the fact that there are buildings built with windows and such at ground level, but the argument he gives is bullshit. Check this out. Historians say that maybe these buildings, the ones with windows at ground level, have sunk or have been buried over time, or the buildings 
have been built on unstable land, but researchers do not agree with this. Are you catching that? Are you catching that slime? Are you catching that such bad rationale in what he's saying here? Shame! 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 Seriously, check out this attempt to be fair. Researchers pointed out that there's a big difference between a building that is sinking into the ground and buildings that are buried or half buried into the ground. Yeah, no shit, right? Sometimes buildings can sink in a little after an earthquake too. Check out this picture of collapsed buildings. <laughs> what the fuck, man? I couldn't make this shit up. I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. I'm sad that I lack the talent to make this shit up. And let's not forget the casual racism. You're a football player. It's in your blood. That's racist. Your soul. That's racist. Your eyes. That's gay. That's homophobic. Okay. That's black. That's racist. Damn. You can't have a proper conspiracy without a little bit of racism. Just gonna get a little bit of cancer, Stan. There are many questions regarding the older buildings in Japan. Who built them? Why? When? And how? Many researchers are questioning if the current people of Japan actually lived there a few centuries ago, right? Japan, like, one of the oldest extant civilizations active in the world, like that Japan. Japan actually lived there a few centuries ago. Or did they come and take the land after disaster happened, which may have wiped out the original people living there a few centuries ago? A few centuries ago. Again, I want to stress this, a few centuries ago. Research have, researchers have noticed that many of the buildings, doorways, and ceiling heights of classical buildings in Japan, like that classical building right there in this picture, are a lot higher and bigger than the people seen living in Japan. Seen living in Japan. For example, in 1920. Before 1945, there were many classical or European type of buildings seen throughout Japan, but today there's less. Yeah, you heard that right. Japanese people are short compared to their doorways, therefore history is a lie and Japanese people didn't live there a couple of centuries ago. Wow, and, and, icing on this Japanese cake here, there's no fucking pictures of doorways and no scales for the image here. How do I know that Japanese people aren't tall enough to walk through that doorway. I can't tell you because it's a stupid fucking picture of his screen. Oh, I love this book. 